Hello everybody, we are back again, back in town, back with another live stream. Today we have different setup in cameras. We have then scene two where you can see my SH-101. And this is the big screen of the SH-101. And then of course we have the regular stream setup. I hope everybody is well. Let me see if we can, in the upper screen, I need to watch for the... Um, the chat room uh, and let's wait on everybody popping up i see already some regular chat friends popping up cat brines hello cat i hope all is well uh, video and music is great yeah it's um just playing bit two i made a sequence and okay and i made the same about the same with this one So that's the SH-101, and this one is the Bit 2. So not very, it's very similar, not 100% the same. So down here you can see and of course, I added on the um, SH-101, I added the delay. So uh, let me see uh, which you can find here. If I open the mixer, F13. Okay, um, this one is on the... Okay, I need to go to scene two, this one. Okay, let's open it again. This, this one is on the... This dry, so the, the SH-101 dry. So I think it's always nice to have a little bit. I also could have reverb. In this case, I picked the delay. So I'm waiting a little bit on more people to join. Then I will dive into the SH-101, which is on the right hand side and show you a few things which are uh, I did in the past. So, uh, and in the, ahead of the live stream, I was simply playing around and they tried to create about the same sound with bit two. I played the same notes in the sequencer of the SH-101, uh, which are also here in the bit two sequence. Here's the bit two cut off. Oops. Moving around the wrong. Put some more resonance. Let's do the same with the SH101. You hear my mouse moving around because I need to go from one screen to another screen. And you hear the sound of the filter. Resonance is different compared to the one in bit. Of course, we have in bit different options. We can use the bit uh, low pass filter two. Let me see if that one. Yeah, that's a bit, a bit more. All the zero latency filters, which can scream pretty much. Zero latency. Oh, there starts the resonance. But oh, that 
Bob's phone is a little bit loud. The echo through resonance. So the resonance goes a little bit further with the H81. Okay, so um, so that's for the start of the live stream, and um, uh, everybody welcome. So let me move on now. So to um, because I want to do some things with the sequencer uh, and do the same with bit two, which of course you also could do with a Predator three or Blue three. But to make it simple, I took this time bit two to do a few tricks, which originally. Uh, started on the SH-101. So let's go do the SH-101. So here we have it, and you can see. Um, yeah, you can see it has particular, uh, if you play the sequencer, it uses the speed of the LFO, the clock. So if I go up, That one, the LFO, uses also for the clocking of the sequencer. So down here is the sequencer. We have one LFO with different waveforms. We have one VCO, so it's only one oscillator, but it has, in the source mixer, it has a sub-oscillator. So in this case, I use the saw waveform. You have then also the square waveform. <clears throat> you have a noise, which is, if I'm not wrong, it's pink noise. Then, of course, you have a filter with resonance, envelope amount, modulation, which is the LFO, and keyboard tracking. Then you can say the VCA to have a normal uh, envelope, or, which is, has only one envelope, gate. In some cases, the gate are nice to use. And then you have different types of triggering from the envelope, which we will go back into. Um, yeah, the SH-101, this one, you can hear it now, yeah, okay, the volume is good, uh, I turned the, my microphone a little bit, uh, if I need to turn up a little bit the microphone, let me know in the chat room, yeah, we, the SH-101 with the band Peru, we, Root had one, I had one, uh, I sold mine in early 80s somewhere because I was a little bit frustrated about the fact that it did not have any memory. Uh, but of course, after time, I regret selling it. And I could, a few years back, I could uh, purchase it back in the state which I had mm. with the uh, hand grip here, with which you could do uh, band paths or pitch band, sorry. And uh, included the uh, the even the uh, guitar uh, leather band for it, so you could hang it around your neck, play it like a guitar, and the the bag, and it's in perfect shape. And I'm happy having it back again. So at that time we used this uh, on Peru continents. We used it. Uh, we used it in the second album of Nova. And let me show you a few things in the sequence, which are cool. But first, simply a few things which are maybe also interesting. How I, for instance, did a kind of first sound with this. Well, if you go up here, you have the, you have the square waveform. And the square waveform, you have the pulse width. So you can make the pulse smaller or wider. Uh, uh, well, if you use then the envelope for controlling this, then this becomes amount. Then you have a kind of a bit of bit of fuzzy sound. It sounds a little bit like a a bit of like sync, but so the envelopes this one makes that the uh, pulse goes from uh, small to wide. Here's a little pitch band. If you press it, you have the LFO. So 
So that's with the envelope controlling the pulse width. So essentially you could also do it manually. But with the envelope you really... You could say the VCA to gate. So the VCA, if it's controlled by this single envelope on the volume, it sounds like this. But if therefore it's nice to have this gate because you can have a that the envelope only works on the uh, on the uh, VCO and the filter. Yeah, another option is, of course, and essentially, if you look at a Uno 60, um, the Uno 60 is pretty much the same layout. Uh, so it's more like a monophonic Uno 60, because you also have here the LFO for controlling pulse width modulation. And then you get this. Kind of more bassy sound. And, and that is cool if you use the LFO for doing the pulse width modulations, you know, the pulse does, does this uh, by using, I need to go more to this, like this. And that makes that you have a kind of chorus sound inside the uh, VCO. So you got a kind of wobbly sound. Because you have only one oscillator, this makes the sound a little bit thicker. So, um, so maybe I could show you in the um, very shortly what I mean by this false mix modulation. You can show this very well in bit. So, scene two, uh, no, this one. Okay, if I shut this one down, shut off the arp. Here we have then square, which is static, but we have the advanced panel. There we can say LFO, change the symmetry or the pulse width. And then we got the same. Here you see it moving around, and that's the same what happens here. Only there's a little bit faster. So that, that you get a little bit the, the Uno type of sound. So that's one of the cool thing. Uh, okay, I'm flying around with my mouse. To make a more fuller sound with the pulse width modulation. Of course, you only have one LFO. So if you would use then a slow rate and you do the uh, LFO modulation, it sounds a bit drunky. Uh, the cool thing is, compared to the Uno 60s, of course, I think I'm not possible on a Uno 60, I'm not sure about that, is that you can combine things. And you can add the saw wave to it, or the sub oscillator. And the interesting thing with the sub oscillator, it's a square, one octave down, two octave down, or two octave down with a more narrow square. You see that? So let me show you on a saw wave for. Os sub oscillator. So there it goes, one square or two octaves down. That's a little bit low. Or so this gives a little bit the impression of that you have two oscillators. Of course, you cannot detune the second sub oscillator, so it's always a very tight 
sound, but very useful. Let's see if you can combine it with pulse. So that's cool. The sub oscillator really adds an additional feel that you have to oscillators, although it's essentially only one. So the sub oscillator is what the name already does say. It is a sub. They divide electronically this oscillators by using a component where you generate one octave lower the square waveform or even two octaves lower a another square waveform. So it's a um, kind of divider trick, but you cannot detune the sub oscillator. Let me hit, uh, show this on uh, bit two again. So here we have bit two, and also here I can have the, the sub oscillator, which is essentially uh, here in this section. I can put it on. Here we can. Okay, it's only on sub oscillator two. Sorry for that. Okay, let me shut down that one. So you cannot detune it, so it's, it always sounds very tight. So it's very different sub oscillator compared to using two oscillators because each oscillator has its own life, has its own start point of the waveform. So if you have two oscillators and even if you have them in a uh, different octave setting, it sounds more alive. But these are two oscillators compared to an oscillator with sub. Okay, let me show you better and more natural way. So this is the, one second, this is the saw wave for oscillator two. Let me I'll make that one, one a square. Okay, now this one, this oscillator two, it's one octave higher and then with sub, maybe I should play lower. There comes the sub. It sounds different as if I would have the same oscillator 2 with oscillator 1 as one octave lower. Because it has far more aliveness, like this. So that's the difference, the, um, the sub oscillator is more a different waveform you see it also here. It's really very tight. So that's the difference. And that's why I call this sub oscillator because it's really essentially, it's divided from the oscillator. So it has no own tuning option. Okay. Here's the square again. Okay, here we back on the, um, so we had that in bit two as well, but we need there, we need the, you see I have the same pulse with modulation sound. Okay, but let me talk more about the SH-101 and in how what we did with the sequence because there are some interesting features um intro okay wrong screen here and back again so for instance I found a very old thing where I also have all kind of patches songs Arrivé that was from Nova 
Here we have the Korg MS-20 choir sounds I wrote down, finally found it. And I found also a thing how I wrote down the sequences. Here we have a patch from the SH-101 and then down here I wrote down, I made a kind of block diagram for playing the sequences. So now the sequence what is inside of it. about it is that you can transpose if you hold this key now how you did, did record the sequences was by pressing load you played a note then you could give it a rest the second or again a note a rest second rest and two notes for instance and a rest rest and then you simply play play okay the sequence is not very nice but for instance i i wrote down here a sequence which i could maybe play now or uh, so the black one is a rest c rest s Rest, rest, S, C, rest, F, rest, F, F, S, rest, 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 C, rest, S, rest, rest, S, rest, bass, B flat, C, F, rest, C, F, S, one, two, three rest then it should be playing it show up to 100 notes you could uh, store in this sequencer but you need to write it down otherwise it's gone because there's no no i missed something okay i need to play it again one second c rest e rest rest e c Rest, F, rest, F, F, S, one, two, three, C. <laughs> okay, let's see if it's now better. Yeah, that's better. So this was then a sequence, so I wrote it down like that. And now we have a little bit of delay. Now the trick to make, for instance, a guitar sound, plugging guitar sound, I use the square wave for, not with LFO, but manual. Because the square waveform with a thin square waveform is very nice for making plucky guitar sounds. Okay, so this is the sequence. Of course, this easily can be done also using software. Uh, uh, but here, because you have some switches, sometimes you do a different switch and then you got some interesting variations. So what you did, what I always did, is to make it different, is to use the LFO. So the gate of the envelope. So the LFO, hey. Hear the difference? So the envelope is now triggered by the LFO in combination with the sequencer. So this is only with the sequencer. And then I switch to LFO. Of course, you need to adjust the, the decay, otherwise the, the effect of it is gone. Hear that? 
at really cool things. And what you also could do is using the filter modulation, which is the LFO again, because that one, this one uses the tempo. Well, I can say, okay, let's do random as waveform. So now it picks random waveform and that goes to the filter. You see, that's one of the tricks I did for making a very cool guitar type of groovy sounds. So this is the normal gate. So this was the original sequence. This one switched the LFO. Changed the decay. And open the random on the filter. So that was one of the trick I did for making very cool sequences, which had far more movement. Well, essentially the same we can do in software. And for instance, if I go back now to um, bit, okay, stream setup, uh, another screen. Okay, I lost, of course, my preset here. Okay, let's make also type of sound. I go here to the symmetry, change the symmetry here a little bit. Make some steps out. Then also the LFO, put that on sync here in free mode and add that one to the filter. Then you got also this kind of in between things changing. But I don't have the second triggering, which could be maybe this triangle down. So you see the LFO really with sample and hold makes that the typical variations pops up. What I essentially also do here by having the LFO connected. Okay, what I did try ahead of the live stream was trying to get the um, SH-101 sync to the whole sequence. But that did not succeed that much. If you see here my scene two, uh, let's drag this one. You see that in here I made, okay, that's a little bit too big. 
uh, I played notes for the SH-101 and I used then here this um, the MIDI output from a MIDI to CV for getting external clock in uh, to trigger the sequencer. But for some reason, maybe it could be the latency while streaming, I don't get a nice timing. So let's give it a try. If I can have it with a beat. You see the, the notes are triggered, which generates the clock in, but it's it's not very tight. Late. I'm not sure what is causing it. I did try it after the uh, so few, few weeks ago. I had the SH5 uh, Yamaha CS30 and I had the same issue. I think it has to do with the streaming. I'm not sure about it because afterwards I did get a very tight sound using MIDI. So I'm not sure what is causing this. Um, maybe it's what I'm hearing back, although it should be okay. Okay, now it plus. Now it sounds better. both at the same time i have now direct monitoring of my sh101 and then it sounds okay i'm not sure how's the timing on your side let me know so if i hit pl play now and i hit play on the this the bit two and this is the sh1 It's um, it's typically uh, for me in monitoring. It's a bit less if I have then, because now it sounds a little bit double for me. But that's how we sing this in the studio. Sometimes we simply hang uh, because, for instance, a TR eight hundred eight has different uh, gate output for the drum sound. Sometimes, and that's what Rude did. I uh, connected the output from one of the rhythm. Uh, uh, sections of the tier 808 simply directly into the SH101 to have some different uh, stuff. Okay, one second. I need to press here. 
Otherwise, my monitor goes out. Oh boy. Okay. Off timer. Your monitor is about to turn off. Press OK to continue. Yeah, how I press OK. So, oh, it's that unbelievable. How do I press OK? One second. It's the second monitor. It's uh, messing around with me. OK, I press OK. <laughs> back again. OK, so back to the... Um, so with the bit two, you also can do these kind of things by combining different modulations together with a sequence. So I had a sequence and I used then the LFO, which is sample and hold, which gives random values in free mode. That's important in free mode. Then you got some random stuff. So the um, so that's a feature which I already did in the uh, SH101, which is cool to do also in contemporary virtual analog machines, virtual synthesizers. Okay, let's go back to the um, SH101. <laughs> Of course, once you had an external clock for doing the sequencer, which I pull out, then of course you had uh, the option uh, with the LFO for using it on the uh, on the uh, on the pulse rest modulation because then the sequencer had a different clock. So if I play it again, let me see if oh, okay, why it doesn't play it here because I have the wrong screen. Sorry. <laughs> So this is the, the melody, and now of course I can use the LFO, because the clock is now, the clock is now external, then you can use the LFO very well also for the pulse rest modulation. If if you don't have MIDI clock uh, on external clock, I remove it here this button. Then it uses for the sequencer, and then you have no different speed for the LFO. So that's a disadvantage, of course. So um, so that's about the SH101. Um, let me see the chat room because I'm talking and talking, but maybe I missed a lot in the chat room. Most likely I missed a whole lot of things in the chat room. Let me check. Everybody welcome. Um, okay. Great guys that you're joining me. Um, sometimes, yeah. Uh, sync, yeah. Uh, sometimes you have also a very good MIDI clock device for for if you use analog gear and you want to clock it together. I use a uh, an older one. What am I? I don't can show you. I think otherwise the cable. Okay, let me see if I can do it. Show it to you. This is a Philip Reese uh, MIDI to CV uh, device. It doesn't have a clock out. Um, but you can control different synthesizers. You have even velocity control output. So very nice. And yeah, the trick what I use for having uh, the clock is simply uh, playing single notes and use that one on the, on the external clock in because the notes are plus five voltage, note on, note off. And that's the same if you use the clock and the clock is of course then most likely 16th note. Okay, so the noise. The 
The noise, if you ask me, is pink noise. And I'm not sure about it. But the cool thing is, you can also use resonance. So if I put down the envelope, you also can use. So you don't have a sinus waveform, but you could say, okay, shut down the oscillators, use the uh, the resonance. I need to be careful with the volume. So you really can make some uh, spooky sounds. Let me see. I had one track on the Nova album, the second one, which I did a whistle with the SH-1. I had a sequence. So that was done by using the resonance. Of course, for tuning, you need to have... Then you had the right tuning. So that's the... Of course, the resonance is great for doing the, uh, the squeak sound. of course the uh, the delay on the uh, SH-101 otherwise would it be a little bit too dry got the reverb so you get these Squeak sounds, these scruff back squeak sound. Or making a bass drum. So if you would not have a bass drum, and you are, don't have a bass drum in your studio, you use the SJ101. And you have a bass drum. Make it random. Noise. Noise is nice to add a little bit of noise to it. Crazy. <coughs> <coughs> 
now you got more the experimental sound. So it's a very cool synth. The, the filter resonance is very powerful. That's a little bit harder to do with virtual analog because with digital, you have a zero tolerance in clipping because yeah, you need to go down also with your volume otherwise you blow up your speakers with an analog synthesizers, especially this resonance very, very, very powerful. So, here do the resonance. It stays, behaves nicer. I must say, although with the uh, zero latency, we, um, it can be nasty. Uh, let me see if I can show you the zero latency. <laughs> I need to go down with the volume. You need to go down with volume here as well. And especially the uh, bandpass can be screamy. And you need to be careful with that. 12 to be bandpass. I believe that John reduced a little bit the volume. Let's see what the 12dB low pass does. See, it's it's a little bit more controls in terms of volume because otherwise with digital you really would have a very uh, nasty sound. With the Roland, this one especially has a very high dynamic range with the resonance. If I would compare this with the Minimoog, which seems to have a built-in limited type of sound, is that less in volume. Yeah, the, the cool thing about the SH-101, it's simple, but it can do cool stuff. The basic sound is great. I know, of course, I did a few um, uh, more experimental sound, but because it has one oscillator, that's a very good basis, uh, but also lead sounds. So if you want to say, okay, let's do some uh, read type of sounds, I put on the reverb. So for lead type of sounds or trumpet type of sound, let me see if I... Of course, uh, it makes a difference if you have a little bit of reverb. So this is dry. juice gets better if you have Princess Ref Sane and Del Sane on it. If you play it very high, you get, I think, more a violin. Thank you. 
Yeah, you see, more violin. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's for particular lead sounds absolutely great. So um <laughs> noise. Oh, now we have a, you have an elephant. <laughs> so that's noise. And uh, with this noise as modulation source, and that's the last sound I will create for today, is we can make also some baked sounds. Oh, R2-D2. And if you use modulation. We can make rain. Of course, this is typical Dutch weather. So this is a typical Dutch uh, Dutch weather sound. Using the uh, noise modulation on the resonance. Oscillator is closed. This sounds like a speaker with just defect. Now it's more like bacon. Yeah, so, um, okay, let's see the chat room. These are the typical lead sounds she sometimes had on the preset machines from Roland or Yamaha. <laughs> okay, let's see the chat room. Because I was playing around, playing around. Okay, R2D2. Yeah, sample and hold. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, random. Let's go back. Something like that. Although it sounds more like that's more manual dancer. <laughs> okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed the live stream today. And um, we hope to catch up next week again. Then maybe I'll take another synth from my collection, talk about it, what I like about it. Or maybe we do that another time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the SH-101, there are some, uh, they call it... Um, um, I lost the name. They cloned it. I'm not sure if they did everything the same, for instance, with the envelope type of stuff, which I did with the sequencer. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I always can stream it back. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe and enjoy creating music, guys. Bye-bye and till next time.